usually a TA or an RA, you get it only after the first semester. They will waive the entire tuition fee and you would okay. get a stipend. Uh, 14 to $15 per hour is the usual average here. So it depends on if you're a grader, it might go up to 18, 20, 24. So here the Toby Toby rents are around 1600. So okay. it should come around 400, 450 per person. VLSI or the semiconductor field is very booming in uh, US. That uh, my internship was in verification, but as such, there are no verification courses in uh, ASU. So what I did was ultimately 16 to 18,000 would be for 10 credits, 10 to 11 credits per semester. Like it depends okay. on how many credits you take. Hello everyone. So today a special guest joined with us, Nitun. Uh, thank you Mithun for joining us today and uh, Mithun currently finished his uh, master's in Arizona State University. He finished his ECE course over there and uh, he is currently working. I thought like we can get more uh, insight like what courses you need to take and uh, to get an internship and full-time opportunities and uh, how to get a TA. Uh, and also what is the part-time opportunities over there in ASU. These are the topics mainly we are going to discuss. And also we'll speak about like housing, what is the food and accommodation cost it will take over there. Uh, thank you, Mithun, for joining us today in the show. And uh, now Mithun will give a brief introduction about it. Hi, uh, I'm Mithun. Uh, I'm currently a graduate from Arizona State University. I did my master's in computer engineering uh, with a focus of electrical engineering in uh, ASU. Uh, my bachelor's I did in electrical engineering from NIT Warangal. And um, to say about uh, the, uh, the course here, uh, my focus was morely on the digital VLSI. So whatever courses that I've taken is more oriented towards uh, the con that concentration. And also my internship was in, uh, I did an internship, which is in verification. And then currently I'm working as an ASIC designer at Microchip Technology. Okay. Thank you, Mithun. And uh, why VLSI in specific? So uh, this is one uh, important question, I think. So many people who come here for EC, uh, many people who I know, they will be studying mainly in VLSI. Is it the job market for VLSI is really good? Or what are the important aspects people are choosing uh, VLSI after their EC or during their EC thing? So VLSI or the semiconductor field is very booming in uh, US and mm -hmm. uh, mostly most of the companies which is sem uh, semiconductor oriented is based in US. And okay. there are a few companies like ARM which is in UK. But other than that, whatever uh, the support uh, in India, whatever companies are existing is mostly kind of supporting or it's it's all the main main uh, job that gets done is kind of in US. Like the planning, the architecture, or those kind of involvements are mostly in US. And um, what made uh, me select US, uh, VLSI is that uh, I I like the coding, but not exactly software kind of coding. So I was looking for something that is uh, more on uh, on hardware side. So that is why I, I shifted my focus towards VLSI. And previously, my I had some experience in PLC programming, so that is also a different kind of programming. So, but that was not something I continue to like, and that is why I shifted my focus to VLSI. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, now I ask you the question about uh, ASU. Uh, so, for for getting your internship and for getting an opportunity as a full time engineer in microchip, what are all the courses? helped you a lot in uh, back in ASU, like maybe it is computer architecture or is it like something related to digital design courses or you might have some fabrication courses, but as you told you are in uh, digital design side, probably what are the computer architecture course and what are the digital design course if you uh, you took, if you if you can say that that will be really useful for everyone. Yeah, so uh, the digital courses that uh, is involved with VLSI that I've taken is uh, digital systems and circuits. Mm -hmm. uh, VLSI design and there was this uh, course called Constructionist Approach to Microprocessors. It had uh, system error log basics and uh, basic level of gate logics and things like that. And uh, we have a uh, computer architecture which is advanced. So we have two uh, which is which is uh, 400 level and a 500 level course. So 500 level courses are the master's level course and you can there is an option to take the bachelor course as well uh, but it won't be added towards your credit. And, oh, okay. 
other than that uh, my internship was in verification but as such there are no verification courses in uh, asu so what i did was that i, I did different uh, projects on verification on ubm and then okay. thing on on edia playground and that helped me get a internship okay cool so note this down guys so uh, in case if your university you may study in any university in case if your university is not having really good courses sometime uh, please try to post your project in eda playground at least for in my opinion for digital design people you can either post in github or at least you can uh, make in a eda playground a workable project and you can add the link in your resume that will be really helpful uh, mithun also done that so which is really great to know uh thanks for sharing that mithun and uh, uh, following up this so uh, again a question specific to asu uh, how many credit hours you need to complete in asu and uh, when you are doing internship will that credit be counted towards your masters graduation so uh we need uh, 30 credits to graduate and okay. it depends on the uh, whether you are in in computer engineering or you are in the electrical engineering masters so these are two different things here so okay. the benefit of the computer engineering is that you can you can, you have the option to take cs subjects as well the computer science subject as well as the electrical subjects okay. without any specific approval but if you are an electrical engineering you need specific approval like say for example computer architecture that needs uh, an approval from the advisor to uh, for you to enroll into that course so okay. i found it more uh, flexible the computer engineering and also in electrical engineering you need the requirement of 10 courses it is not exactly 30 credits but no. it may add up to it will anyway when you take 10 courses would come across 30 credits okay okay so basically uh, you need to complete 30 credits for sure right yes and also about uh, the internship credit so we have just one credit for internship and it is not counted towards graduation oh okay so are you allowed to take like parallel courses while you are doing internship yes. because in many universities they will allow uh, yes so we can take uh, we can take uh, like uh, nine credits uh, or i think maximum 11 credits in a oh. semester without the okay. approval of uh, the advisor so you can okay. if you get an ta or an ra you can take up to 12 credits but other than that you can take 11 credits but i what i did was i just took two courses of three credits and a one credit of internship so that there is no much load on the course and as well as i could balance the internship as well cool cool uh, understandable and uh, following up question mathun so uh, how much is the course fees like uh, let's say we will break it break it down simply to the uh like semester level uh, we don't need to go in specific like per credit hour or fees or something because it will obviously change every year but in case could you give any tentative amount like maybe some 10000 to 13 or 10 to 15 something like that or what will be the approximate amount uh, per year you need to pay per so, semester you need to pay sorry yeah. so for the first semester that i i enrolled for 10 credits and uh, it the fees for that first semester was uh, around 16000 something so okay. it change uh, depending on the uh, the years so you okay. need to check for that but approximately 16 to 18000 would be for 10 credits 10 to 11 credits per semester like it depends okay. on how many credits you take okay so which states that you can even finish in three semesters so 16 into 3 which will be around like 48000 something around or maybe 50000 around uh, 50000 dollar yeah, Yeah, which were well. 15,000, and this option to finish in three semesters is only available for computer engineering. So electrical engineering has to take the ten ten courses. So you will not be able to finish ten uh, courses within uh, three semesters. Three. Oh, okay, okay, uh, understood. So good to know that. And uh, uh, let me come little bit further, more generic questions. So these generic questions, what I wanted to ask is uh, like. what is the uh, opportunities or ta opportunities or part time opportunities over there in the campus so uh, not just specific to ecd maybe you could have seen your friends who is getting ta in other departments who you yourself at ta so what are the you can put it in a generic way like uh, how much percentage people can get and uh, in case let's say i didn't get any ta or under the professor or anything then what is my opportunity to get a part time in the out of the like in food 
food work places or some other stations like that uh usually a uh, ta or an ra you get it only after the first semester so unless you complete your first semester uh, you you won't be able to get a ta or an ra and for okay. an ra you need uh, to find a professor who is uh, who is willing to support your research and your masters need to be converted to a thesis as well they prefer that okay so there is masters with thesis and uh, that is com uh, there is a portfolio kind of option so based on that if you take a thesis option you can go into more research oriented side and uh, the other one is a normal one which you finish with the portfolios okay and uh, about uh, ta uh, it is usually based on your uh, gpa okay. and it is uh, not exactly clear on how it is being done at asu so since there is a lot of uh, students it's uh, there is a referral that works with the professor so if you approach the professor uh, before the ta selection and uh, the the professor supports you and you can uh, uh, you know he the chairman can help you get the ta before like with with the help of a professor okay okay and also uh, about the part time and i think there is a lot of opportunities for part time on campus and we have four campuses so any of the campuses you can uh, apply and uh, get a job of uh, a part time because there are various different rules and opportunities there are food courts there are gym positions there are uh, office administration process processes and there is uh, the issc which is the international students council yeah. there is a uh, there and anywhere you can go from different campuses there are shuttle buses which is running every 15 to th- uh, 30 minutes uh to different campuses so this one it, it depends on which campus you are and uh, how 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 much time you can allocate to travel and based on that there is there is a huge opportunity here for part time okay cool so following up question uh, so after with this part time money let's say i don't get a ta uh, and uh, i i want to ask that question also like for ta is the tuition fee is paid uh, and for ra so there are two kinds of ta there is a full ta and a um, half ta so that's what okay. they call it for the full ta they will give the entire tuition fee and you will okay. get a stipend uh, okay. but for the uh, for the half ta you get uh, your tuitions get converted to in state tuitions not the international tuitions oh. so it is basically the 50% or less the even less than that you just have to pay a, just certain amount of uh, credits whatever uh, the domestic how uh, i mean the in state whatever the students pay that is the only one the only thing that you need to pay okay okay cool uh, good to know that so then with the other part time let's think about like food court or gym or uh, international student center the student is working will that part time money is enough to support their living and accommodation like for food and then the stay yeah uh, so uh, we get uh, i think uh, 14 to 15 dollar per hour is the usual average here so it depends on if you are a grader it might go up to 18 20 24 uh, okay. and there is something called a gsa graduate student assistant uh, which pays around 32 uh, okay. per uh, hour so based on that and even if it is just the basic part time of uh, even a food court or things i think it is sufficient uh, to stay in a reasonable apartment of 2b 2b with four members sharing Okay, so yeah. so what is the average cost that we are looking at for a two B two B? So here the two B two B rents are around sixteen hundred. So okay. it should come around four hundred four fifty per person, including all the utilities and electricity. Okay, in case if they are sharing the apartment, then it will be four hundred. If not, it's going to be around eight hundred, and then the utilities. So okay, understandable. And uh, so uh, this is all the most questions I had. and uh, almost all my questions i covered uh, what i wanted to ask you more than this is uh, what would you uh, suggest or advise that one advice which you have if you had known earlier it would have been useful that what is that one advice you want to give to the new people coming to asu uh, the asu i think it is a really good university and i think the asu for the vlss side i think it is uh, analog side is the most uh, courses that has been helpful for people to get uh, jobs and internships which is uh, which as such as a course but okay. although we we do get uh, diff- from like from various fields we can we can move into like say for pd or uh, verification or design we can move into those field as well without much trouble but the 
as such courses which is valuable asu is known for this analog courses and oh. um, the thing that i should have which i could have known which would have helped uh was that maybe uh in your free time i think do as many projects as possible which is okay. uh, relevant to your path like say for if you want to go into verification do more uh, kind of uvm and uh, verification related projects because that would help you stand out from the other resumes because everyone who is graduating from the asu would have the same courses and same projects which is being done in the courses and it would help you stand out if you do more something on your own so if this is something i figured out when i found difficulty getting an internship during summer so this is something if i would have known before would have helped me yeah this people who is watching this video until now uh, know this particular point so in any university whenever you are studying all the people will have similar projects so when you are going to have a similar set of project and you have the same resume how your resume will outstand other people uh that is very important to make sure that your resume stand out so you need to know or you need to do extra projects in order to make your resume stand out that's what mithun is telling he did his uvm projects in eda playground which helped him in getting the internship uh, as this he told earlier in the interview too so i would suggest people who doesn't uh, know like uh, what i should do or uh, i am not getting internship call or uh, my my resume is not getting picked this will be the major problem for many people so make sure that you have a different set of projects than others in your university that will really help you out and uh, thank you mithun for this advice i actually even i wanted to say this for a long time i just uh, when you spoke i i thought like yeah this is a really valid point uh, because yeah. you i did the same thing uh i we discussed this i guess i was doing some bunch of projects and uh, which i had posted in eda playground and then that helped me actually so yeah i understand that and uh, thank you for joining us and if you want to give any other advice like personal advice or life advice you can say if not we can watch it up uh personal advice maybe i think enjoy the time at the uh, at when you do your masters because the the spring break or the fall break you get is a good time for you to travel visit places because once you get into a job or an internship the, there won't be much time for any other activities because you need to take leave and things like that so i would suggest people to you know work whenever you can i mean study hard but whenever you get time to uh, get a vacation or a break please do try to enjoy it uh, it is it would be a good experience thank you thank you mathun thank you for joining us and uh, for meeting me uh, yeah bye bye, bye.